present with us today in this auditorium in Arlington County, many of you embarked on a journey from somewhere else. You left behind families and friends, cities and villages, farms and businesses, happy times and challenging times, making sacrifices to begin your lives anew in this great country of ours. Rita Dove, former poet laureate of the United States, has said, libraries are where it all begins. And it's true. Let's think about that for a minute in the context of what it means to be a citizen. Becoming a citizen means being granted certain rights and responsibilities in exchange for active engagement in community life and governance at both the local and the national level. Citizenship is a weighty responsibility, one that requires patience and diligence. This country's form of representational government depends on the active engagement of all citizens. And that's where libraries come in. Libraries, especially public libraries like this one, were founded on the belief that the public, everyone, has a right to know, to believe, to practice what they believe. Free and unrestricted access to information is the core mission of a library. And it makes our democracy work by giving each one of us the resources and support tools we need to pursue the lives we imagined and what brought us to this country in the first place. Public libraries welcome all who enter our doors. We create safe spaces to celebrate our varied cultures. And our programs, books, and services are free. You will always, always be welcome here, and we hope you keep coming back. Congratulations to each of you on your signal achievement. From this day forward, you are what countless others who have gone before you are, citizens of the United States. Wear this accomplishment with dignity and pride you have earned it. Later in the program, you will hear from Tanya Talento. Ms. Talento is an interim Arlington County Board member. She's also former chair of the Arlington County School Board and a proud Latina American born to immigrant parents from Guatemala. And now it is my pleasure to bring and welcome to the stage Ron Rosenberg, Washington District Director of U.S. Customs and Immigration Services. Thank you and congratulations. Good morning. My name is Ron Rosenberg. I'm the District Director of USCIS, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and I am so excited to be here with you today. Welcome you, your friends, your family, and guest to today's special naturalization ceremony at Arlington Central Library to celebrate your United States citizenship. I'd like to thank Arlington County and the Arlington Central Library for co-hosting this uh, ceremony. In addition to representing USCIS today, I'm also a proud Arlingtonian. Um, I live a few blocks from here. I walked right over here, and I've spent countless hours in this building, including volunteering at the book sale. It is uh, such a privilege to be here to showcase our agency's uh, naturalization mission uh, in such a place that's so special to me and my family. This library and similar local libraries throughout Virginia offer a wide range of resources, far beyond the traditional books on the shelves. And I do hope you'll take full advantage of your time here at the library and then you'll visit, be a, a frequent patron of your own local library uh, and avail yourself of its many, many resources. I congratulate each of you on reaching this important milestone. Your hard work and determination have led you here, 
and I'm pleased to be the one to administer your oath of allegiance to the candidates. So, uh, you will become our newest U.S. citizens. Your spirit and dedication will uphold America's tradition of providing hope and opportunity for generations of immigrants to come after you. I hope this day inspires you to take full advantage of your citizenship, as well as the rights and responsibilities that come along with it, I mentioned earlier. Okay, so to officially begin our ceremony, let's all please stand, and place your right hand over your heart, and we will have the presentation of colors by the Space Force Junior Reserve Officers Training Corps, JROTC, Honor Guard from Arlington Tech High School. And I'd also like to welcome Prakriti Duja, an Arlington County employee with the Arlington Economic Development Team, I've heard Biz Team said, uh, who will sing the national anthem uh, with us. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the Parts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you and congratulations. Thank you to Ms. Duja and, and to our color guard. Uh, you can please be seated. So, at this time, I'd like to introduce my, my dear colleague, uh, Kim Zanotti. She's the Washington Field Office Director for USCIS, and she will be calling the countries and presenting you candidates for naturalization. Thank you, Ron. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, candidates. When you hear your current country of nationality called, I would like you to please stand, and then you will remain standing. Argentina, Bolivia, Canada, China, Cote d'Ivoire, Cuba, Egypt, El Salvador, Ethiopia, France,
Germany, Ghana, Honduras, India, Iran, Iraq, Jordan, Laos, Liberia, Libya, Mauritius, Mexico, Morocco, Nepal, Nicaragua, Nigeria, Pakistan, Peru, Poland, Serbia, Sierra Leone, South Africa, South Korea, Syria, Turkey, United Kingdom, Uruguay, Vietnam, and Zambia. Mr. Rosenberg, I present to you 50 candidates representing 39 countries who have applied to become citizens of the United States. Each of the candidates has been interviewed by an officer of USCIS, and unless exempted by the law, has demonstrated the ability to read, write, and speak words in the English language. Each has demonstrated his or her knowledge and understanding of the history and principles and form of government of the United States. Mr. Rosenberg, I recommend that these candidates be administered the oath of allegiance, thereby admitting them to United States citizenship. Thanks, Kim. Candidates for naturalization, Are you ready? Yes. Okay, it's a big moment. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. We'll go slow, okay? I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince Potentate, potentate, state or sovereignty, state or sovereignty. Of, whom of whom or which I have heretofore been, heretofore been a, subject a subject or citizen, that I will sort, support, and defend, that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws, Constitution and laws of the United States of America, of America against, all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations. You are America's newest citizens. I'm so excited to welcome you as my fellow Americans. Now that you have all taken the oath of allegiance, I'd like to ask all of you to remain standing and we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Unlike the Oath of Allegiance, the Pledge of Allegiance is where you, you're going to um, uh, place your hand over your heart instead of in the air. You're gonna put it over your heart and we're gonna cite this together in unison, okay? Uh, unlike when a responsive reading, okay? 
It's the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And you can, by all means, be seated. Thank you so much, and congratulations. So. So at this time, it's my honor to introduce Tanya Talento, Arlington County board member who will provide congratulatory remarks. In addition to serving on the Arlington County board, Ms. Talento previously served as a member uh, and chairwoman of the Arlington School Board. Ms. Talento also currently serves as the Northern Virginia Regional Director for US Senator Mark Warner, where she manages the Senator's office in Vienna and leads the outreach work for Northern Virginia. Ms. Talento was born and raised in the DC area, is a community leader and activist, and has called Arlington home for almost 25 years. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Talento. Good morning and thank you so much for that lovely introduction. I am so excited to be here today. Um, and on behalf of the Arlington County Board, I want to thank Arlington Libraries for hosting the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services Naturalization Ceremony here at our Central Library. It is truly an honor to have been invited to offer remarks and celebrate this momentous occasion with all of you. As the daughter of Guatemalan immigrants, I know just how special this ceremony is. My parents came to the United States to pursue the American dream and provide my family with a better life and better opportunities they could only dream of. I know how hard the journey can be, how hard you must have worked, and how proud you must be to be here today. I wish I could tell you that I remember this from my father's citizenship ceremony, but he did not tell us about it. <laughs> I often wonder why, but I think he was so proud to be here with my mom and to have four children here who were Americans, who weren't dealing with the struggles that him and my mother had in Guatemala. My father is Mayan Indian, and my mother was fair-skinned like myself. And in Guatemala, that's not always an easy thing to experience. Um, the Mayan community there has gone through very, very tragic things over the course of the years. And so they came here in hopes to have something better. And I always think, how hard must it be to leave your home, your language, your culture, and to come to a new place where you likely don't know many people, if any at all, where you don't have guaranteed income, where you don't know if they'll understand you and your mannerisms, and yet you come in hopes. I've always admired my family who has done that journey. And I'm forever grateful that they did that because it has provided me as a Latina American the opportunity to have an experience and a life and dreams that they couldn't have in Guatemala. And my father will say every Thanksgiving, God bless America. With his heavy accent and all, he hasn't lost it. But every Thanksgiving, as we're being thankful for all the things that we have here in this country, a holiday that they don't even understand in Guatemala, he says, and God bless America. I hope that you understand the great journey and the great sacrifice and the great reward that you have today in being a US citizen. And I understand the attachment that we sometimes have at home, to our home country, to our people. And what I will tell you is that there are still fights and social justice issues here in America, and we can fight them as one community to show the world what it's like to live in union with people from different backgrounds and different languages and different cultures, and to come to a country where you can experience your culture and be American. I had the opportunity to take a community college course at NOVA. It was called Intercultural Communications. And I was like, this is gonna be fascinating. And it talked about how every country has a culture based on the country's history of war and government, stability and instability. And it had 12 categories of how each country would falter or would land in that category. Right? And if you were above 50, you were more this way, you were under, you were, you were less. 
The last assignment of that class was for us to do an essay and to analyze our culture. I was really nervous about this. I was so worried that I would be more one than the other, that maybe my identity as growing up here as a Latina would be thrown away, or maybe my proudness of being American would be confused. I will tell you I was 50-50. I had six traits that were completely American and six traits that were completely Guatemalan, and I was like, wow, this is real. So I want you to know that as you experience your new citizenship in this country, that you embrace what it means to be American, to be in this country and experience the actual ability to have dreams that you may not have been able to do in your home country. You do not have to forget where you came from, but you can be both. And I am so grateful that I'm able to be American and Latina and bring the voice of the immigrant community's struggles to governance. And with that, I want to talk to you a little bit about the responsibilities of what it means to be American. First, I want to sincerely thank you for making this decision. I do remember when my father came home and he's like, I'm an American citizen. We were like, what? I was like, what? Why didn't you tell us? But we were so excited for him. My mother unfortunately passed away before she could have that opportunity. But I know that this was a big deal. And while you have already been cherished, been a cherished neighbor of our community, taking the step to become a naturalized citizen is a conscious choice, not to just enjoy the rights and privileges of citizenship, but also to assume new responsibilities to our shared democracy and to each other. First, I would like to take a moment for you to look around. As I've shared, we're all from different backgrounds. The people sitting next to you may speak a different language, be from a different nation, and have unique skills and life experiences. But today, we are all Americans, all members of this great country. As a US citizen, you are joining a diverse nation of voices and goals, and with that come expectations of tolerance and mutual respect. And I want to just emphasize that. Sometimes it's easy to come here and be comfortable with the culture and the people that you know. But if we don't show everyone who we are, how we are American and are part of this community and give back to this community and this economy and live here and raise our families here and engage people here, then they can't see the beauty that each of us brings to this country to make it the great country it is today. So please engage the world around you that is not like you. And as American, show them what it means to be American. As a US citizen, you're joining a diverse nation of voices, values, and goals. And with that come the expectations, again, of tolerance and mutual respect, even when we disagree and even when it is hard. And our, our diversity of thought and values is a strength, not a weakness. And we must strive to preserve the freedom to be who we are for everyone here in the US. So with that, I'm gonna ask you to do something. Now that you are a citizen, you have freedoms and responsibilities. It is so important for you to vote. Please register to vote. This country is one of the few countries in the world where our voice has an impact. I didn't understand that growing up. When my dad became, you have to imagine, we're in the US, my parents couldn't vote. I didn't know what voting was. As a young teenager, my father comes home and he's a US citizen. And some point between then, there was a presidential election and he went to vote. So when I turned 18, what I knew is that I had to vote in a presidential election. And it wasn't until I got involved into the local community here in Arlington that someone told me, do you know there's an election in Arlington every year? Every year we have elections here. Every year. And I'm like, what? And they're like, we think you should run for the school board. And I'm like, okay. And there's a caucus. I'm like, what's that? Please learn about this exercise to vote about the right that you have gained today to have an impact on how your government represents and cares for your community. There are voter registrations out there. 
It is such a privilege. There's people in Guatemala, I was told I had a family in Guatemala who died in a protest, hoping for a privilege that would even mimic what we have here in the US. So I ask you please, from local school board elections to voting for the US president, which is happening in 2024, every four years, you now have the right and responsibility to vote for candidates and decisions that will impact you, your family, your community, and now your country. There's an election November 7th. There's great candidates on the ballot, and it's your voice and your right to select who you want to represent you. And it doesn't matter if you feel like your vote is not going to count because so many people are voting. There are so many elections that are won by one vote in Virginia. And we have to make our voices heard to show our country who we are as a people united. This was always your home, but now you have a greater say on how it's managed and what the future will look like. So again, please, please take that responsibility, own it, and remember, for a lot of us, we have family members that aren't citizens, that live here and make this their home and they don't have a chance to vote. So as an immigrant and a naturalized citizen, I believe it's even more important for us to vote because many times we are bringing the voice of our communities who make up our country here in the US to that ballot. And then finally, another responsibility is jury duty. Yes, a lot of people feel like that about jury duty, but I wanna tell you, <laughs> it's really important because just like a vote, we are people in jury duty making decisions for our neighbors and our community. And it's so important to make sure that if your opportunity comes and you are asked to participate, that you please do so. If something, if I'm ever accused of a crime, which I pray I will never commit, I want my people and my community to be able to see me and judge me and make a decision for that. So important jury duty. And finally, this is not a duty or more of a, or, or, or a requirement, but more of an encouragement. I hope that you use your new status to explore not just your nation, but our world. You can now apply for a US passport, providing you access to more than 180 destinations. Just as you've widened our horizons with your history, with your history and culture, so too can you widen yours through travel. I didn't get to travel anywhere but Guatemala twice, because we were my, my dad was a cab driver, my mother was a cook, and they rose in their careers. My dad ended up being a shift supervisor at a homeless shelter, and he finally got certified through a night program as a drug and alcohol counselor in the 80s, and he still does that today, as he is approaching 84 years old. He was one of the first bilingual drug and alcohol counselors in the Washington, D.C. area in the 80s, during the crack endemic that we had here. And it was so important to have his voice and to people to see him and to see that they could be and look like him and be successful here. So as I got older, I had the opportunity to travel and I always took for granted that I didn't ever think about where I was restricted to go, except maybe through a travel advisory. And it wasn't until I got older and saw family and friends who were not from here have restrictions that I understood what a gift it is. So please, Explore the world and show them how beautiful America is and how we embrace all cultures and our one people, regardless if we don't look like each other or our accents are different or we speak different languages or we're more assertive or less assertive than a culture or this culture because we are all American today. It is truly an honor to be here. I am so excited for you. I know how special this day is. I know for many of you, you didn't even know if you could get here. And I welcome you. As a US citizen of the United States, congratulations, felicidades, please celebrate today. And I look forward to seeing you at the voting polls. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Patelento, for those inspiring words. So I don't know if we can top that, but he's going to try. We have a short message from the President of the United States. 
followed by a short musical video presentation. Welcome, my fellow Americans. First and foremost, I want to thank you for choosing us and believing that America is worthy of your aspirations. Every immigrant comes from America from different circumstances and for different reasons. But you all have one thing in common, courage. The courage it takes to sacrifice and make this journey. The courage to leave your homes, your lives, your loved ones, and come to a nation that is more than just a place, but rather an idea. An idea that where everyone is created equal and deserves to be treated equally. The idea that we have as a nation, and we, are, we can define America in one word, possibilities possibility since its founding. That very idea has been nurtured, enriched, and advanced by the contributions, sacrifices, and dreams of immigrants like you and immigrants like my own ancestors from Ireland, like generations of our fellow Americans. And today, you've earned a new title equal to that of an American president, the title I'm most proud of, citizen, citizen of the United States of America. I look forward to standing with you as you embrace your new rights and responsibilities, as you build your lives and legacies here, as generations have done before you in this great nation of immigrants. So welcome, my friends. Welcome, my fellow Americans. Welcome. May God bless you all, and may God bless the United States of America.
probably, I can't count the time, number of times I've seen that video, and it, it always gets me. Um, you know, it's, it's also a time capsule of, of all of our peers who have worked in this agency delivering citizenship for decades. And um, so we got to see a lot of our peers here. But, you know, one other plug I want to make is you're now United States citizens. You can work for USCIS. <laughs> and we're hiring. So go on USA Jobs, and we would love to have you. A lot of our officers are former customers. And it is such an honor to bring them into the service of, for that they, they and their families, uh, the same journey that they made. So, okay, now you get your hardware. I would like to invite Kim Zanotti to return to the podium. She will call your names, and we're going to present you with your naturalization certificates graduation style. So when you hear your name, uh, please come up to receive your naturalization certificate, and then you'll kind of circle back to your seat. And I'd like to invite our principals to form a receiving line so that we can congratulate our new citizens and present them with their certificates. All right, this is it. You guys are gonna hear me butcher your names. Let's see how I do. <laughs> All right, Delmi Gladys Turcios. <clears throat> Come on up. Actually, yep. Go with this. Yep. Jose Guillermo Mendoza Reyes. Jovan Todosevic. Aparna Dinkar Mantri, Kalukeki Chinambu Chundu, Luis Javier Miles Mazzatelli, Cheek Liosi, Sharif Ramzi Abdelmaula Aisa, Edwina Carter Gran, Juan Gabriel Zurita, Farah Sharif, Lauren Ursula Ajoba Aka, Mabel Queen Sese, Hermes Cardona Castro, Olivier Pascal Rochedreau, Ali Matu Bangura, Viomani Noi Vong Pashan, William Stefano Ventura, Salim Abdulkarim Alrazu, Javier Ernesto Pino Eras, Kalsum Kakar, Tubo Tamono Fubara White, Ben Lee Lee. Ava Grazina Nowak, Bojan Isik, Actually, make sure I did that. Helmut Maximilian Tischler, Ashrak Ishak Ibrahim Shore, Myung Wan Park, Maria Del Consuelo Lopez Reynoso. Tevebek Belete Zaliki, Veronique Jimeno. Yep, where's okay? Yeah, they're out. Get it right. My goodness, there we go. Martin Craig Hall. There you go. Belanesh Nedi Tulu. Henriette Suzanne Muller. Fawaz Firas Rashid Alamir. There we go. Fawaz. Very good. Fawaz.
Kimia Salmani Nayasar, Veronique Jimeno. I don't know how they. Say. Happy birthday, too. <laughs> Tanner Salik. Maciel Carolina Zernueska. Lona Faudur. Mansour Ahmad Malik. Hyun Young Huang, Hilal Sami Al Said, Ronald Gisbert Pardo Terceros, Charles Brabi, Sayed Said Musavi, Anik Lal Bianju. Teresa de Jesus Bonilla Montoya, Mohamed Kenzi, Duke Gok Wen, and Hang Lee Lim. Congratulations to you all. Congratulations to you and congratulations to Kim. I can't tell you how much she invests in getting everybody's names right. We put a lot of effort into that. We want to honor your special day. Thank you all so much for joining us uh, this morning to celebrate your citizenship. We so appreciate Arlington Central Library for hosting us today. And I want to thank Director Kresh and Arlington County Board Member Tanya Talento for participating in today's celebration. And above all, I want to thank our newest citizens for choosing United States citizenship. My fellow Americans, and I'm going to, I'm going to hearken on something that Ms. Talento said, please, please do not leave this building today until you've registered to vote. We're right outside. Okay? If your family or friends are here and they're not, and they're U.S. citizens and they're not registered to vote, they can too, okay? Um, we have volunteers right outside to help you with that. So before we depart, let's have one final round of applause for America's newest citizens. And I'm told there are refreshments outside for you, so please thank you so much to the uh,